Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be showing you a second look of this Logisys Micro HX power supply. This is a power supply that goes on Newegg for I believe $17.99 or so. And surprisingly it actually has I think 4 out of 5 for the average reviews on of course Newegg's site. My previous video was of the inside power supply with the PCB still attached to the casing. But after I removed the casing, I discovered other things I'd like to share with you guys about this power supply. It's almost like they attempted, sort of attempted at trying to make a half decent power supply, but they just failed to really, you know, make an actual decent power supply. What's funny is in Newegg's description, or at least um, the highlights of this thing, it claims that it has an EMI filter. Well, truth is, I guess you could say they sorta of attempted one by two Y capacitors but no X capacitor no coil right here you see no X cap and no coil and no X cap on the AC plug all I can say is epic fail there let's let's continue on we have the four diode treatment for the um, rectifier I'd like to see the rectifier bridge here, but of course this is a sub $20 power supply, so don't expect it. Even the Dalbatech power supply in the TV box has a 4 diode treatment. Have a look here. We have two capacitors that claim to be 470 microfarads, but look how small they are. I guess what I'll do is I'll grab an actual 470 microfarad cap. Just, just to show you guys what a normal size one looks like. So anyways, look, um, get this camera adjusted and you can just have a look at the power supply while I dig for it. Anyways, you can see the secondary side, which I'll get to that here shortly. Let's see. Let me grab a couple of 470 microfarad caps. I'll show you guys a um, caps on one while I'm at it too. Okay, now here's a look at the primary side. Get this turned around or try to anyway. And just have a look at the sides of those four set of those caps that claim to be four sanding microfarads, but they're actually not. Those are actually, according to their size, I would assume they are 330 microfarad caps. Let me get you a better focus so you can see. See, they claim to be 470 microfarads. Now, here is a Gen Con 470 microfarad cap. Notice it has the same height, but look at the diameter of the capacitor. Look how much fatter it is compared to the one on the left that's actually on the power supply. Now, I'm not sure if this is even a 470. It feels a bit light, but I believe it would probably be close to a 470. This is about the right size. Now here is a Capzon 4 cm microfarad cap. And you notice they're the same diameter, but the Capzon is taller. I actually used two of these in the Diablotech power supply. It had actual 330 microfarad caps in it that were real small. So I actually soldered in two of these in their place. That power supply is much happier now. At least it's the um, primary switches are anyway. So anyways, as you can see, 4 cm microfarad, 200 volts. 4 cm microfarad, 200 volts, so they're the same voltage rating, so expect to be pretty much the same size. The caps get bigger as the voltage value goes up. I mean, like a 4 cm microfarad, 6.3 volt cap is like really small. But anyways, again, let's go ahead and move on. I already focused on the primary side, but I'm... I'm going through this all over again so that way for you guys who haven't watched my prior video. We have 13009 main switchers, two of these right there. And some flavor of, let's see, in channel MOSFET, I, I would believe, for the 5 volt standby, which, yes, is two transistor designed. This power supply uses a, a dated half bridge 
topology not very efficient but of course we're talking about a sub twenty dollar power supply and I'm going to talk about something else here it's like they attempted a quality to actually make a half decent supply here they used a massive let's see um, isolation transformer and a massive 5 volt standby transformer but look at the um, other transformer it's not very big it's like a, it's a EI-33 and again I don't really expect to see humongous transformers in these micro ATX power supplies but still this thing claims to be I think 350 watts this is really probably like a 200 or 250 watt tops they should have made more honest ratings on this thing but anyways let's go and move on to the secondary side the heat sink is kind of bent up, but let's see what I can do here. Bend this little guy out of the way. And bend this one over a little bit. Now I can shine my light in and sort of see. As you may able to be able to tell, I don't have any plans of fixing this thing. We have a, for the 3.3 volts, we have a MOSPEC S30C45C. I'm assuming that's a 30 amp device. And the center device is for 12 volts. As you can look at the output wires, on the right we have the orange wires, which is 3.3. Center we have yellow, which is 12 volts. And on the far left we have, well actually far left we have ground and over next says 5 volts. So the center device, if I can read it, hard to tell. That's the STPR16. I'm assuming this may be a shock key device. I don't know. Maybe it could be a. It might be a fast recovery diode. Appears to be rated for 16 amps, which is above the ratings of the sticker, which I'll show you the sticker here in just a moment. So, again, in review 30 amps for 3.3, 16 amps for 12. And let's see what we have for 5, if I can read that. I can't make out all the characters, but I see, I think FCM or FCH, I can't tell, 30A06, so apparently this is a 30 amp device for 5 volts. So, 30 amps, 3.3, 16 amp, 12, 30 amps, 5. Let's look at the sticker. It claims 30 amp on the 5, that's practically the maximum it can do, 3.3 volts, claims 20 amps when the device can do up to 30 12 volts is rated for 12 amps when it's um, the rectification is rated for 16 amps so it is for the most part on its on its outputs but you know you put all these together I'm not sure if it would actually equate to 350 watts I'm not gonna sit here and do the math in this video but um but anyways usually when you see a 350 watt supply you're expecting more um, I mean a lot more in today's power supplies on a 12 volt rail normally 300 watt supplies that are th yeah 300 watt supplies their 12 volt rails usually are rated for like 19 or 20 amps but anyways let's go ahead and continue on looking at this thing we have BH capacitors over here and all we have those primaries um, <laughs> I can't really tell what brand those are they just have a little symbol on them but these are BH capacitors over here. The, De the Diablo Tech Power Supplies had these two. And these tend to just dry out. They don't bulge, they just dry out. The Diablo Tech Power Supply and the TV box um, started having some instability problems. So I, had, I recapped it and that took care of that. And if you're curious about this Diablo Tech Power Supply I'm talking about, I'll actually link you guys a video on it. But anyways, um anyways look at these coils this is the 3.3 volt coil look how small it is it's not very big that's to be expected for 3.3 volt rail that's pretty normal but look at the other one look how small that is this thing claims to be 350 watts that thing is I mean it's really tiny and I think we got a broken wire in here too because I looked carefully in there and I noticed a broken wire and just have a look at the PCB over here this is what I want to show you guys. Again, if you didn't notice it real well in the previous video, look at how discolored that PCB is. The yeah, excuse is shaking. I'm trying to get this where you can directly see it. 
you might be able to get an idea here. I think what I'll do is I'll rip that coil out and then we'll get a really good look. Well, okay, everybody, I got that coil out of the way. There it sits right there. Let's go ahead and have a look at it right quick. Look how small that is. It's not very big at all. Let me go ahead and grab you guys a um, soda bottle cap just to compare. I mean, look at this. How pitiful. Now, have a look at this. Look how black that is. I'll help you out a little bit. I'll get you some light there. Look at how black that is. Yeah, it's just a big dark spot right in the middle, middle where the coil is at. That coil must have got really hot. I see some diodes nearby too. I'm not sure if those two right there are zeners or not because of their color, but um, look at how black that is. It's so black that the um, silk screen is like, you can't see it. It's that black. You know, it's just like Johnny Gruz said on a, um, one of his reviews of the Hercules Power Style off eBay. I am upping this power supply here from Gutless Wonder to Fire Hazard. I mean, look at the PCB. It's scorched. It is scorched big time. Yes, I would definitely say that is a fire hazard for sure. I mean, look at these caps. Look how black that glue is on top of the caps. This thing got hot. Very, very hot. And guess what it was powering? A socket 754 AMD with a gig of RAM and a basic video card. Single optical drive, single hard drive. And it burnt like crazy just from running that look at this I mean I mean seriously this angers me but not as much what's in it but not as much as what's on the bomb side as PCB which I'm about to show you right now again it's like they attempted to make a quality power supply but failed I mean the casing has plastic in the bottom that's a good thing that's good to have that for insulation and they actually padded the primary side of this power supply with this with this foam I mean again they they attempted to make something decent here now let's have a look at the, at the soldering quality on the primary side it's it's pretty decent but look at the secondary side this is where they just up and failed I mean they have stuff soldered to the bottom side of the PCB like for instance this diode they got a diode here a jumper wire here some resistors over here. I mean, look at this. This angers me right here. To think that, you know, a manufacturer could cut corners this bad. I mean, soldering stuff to the bottom side of the circuit board. Why? Why? You got resistors. I mean, you got spots for resistors over here. I see, um... Yeah, I see two spots. I see R... 31B R31A. Let me get you a good focus so I can see that. And get you some light. See R31A, R31B? Instead of putting resistors on the top side, <laughs> they suck them on the bottom. Isn't that just wonderful? And of course, we got this diode here. Again. So, anyways, um. This right here is good reason to not buy the Logasys power supply off Newegg. I mean, the only Logasys power supply I've seen that's actually half decent is the clear acrylic one. And I guess they had to make something decent for that because, you know, they can't, they can't make everything they have a piece of junk. But yeah, you think this is bad? From what I've read online, and what I've seen in um, in the bad caps um, forums, I've seen logs as power supplies that look even worse than this. So pretty much to sum it up here, I would say stay away from this brand.
it's a hazard to your computer if not your home I mean again look at this for I mean we're going to wrap up this video by getting you a nice shot of that black spot on this board look at that that is pretty bad and oh yeah the fan it, it gets 12 volts at all times and blows lots of air so this thing did not lack in um, airflow it just burnt like crazy running a basic system probably pulled 200 watts maybe 250 watts tops and this burnt up like crazy so anyways any questions or comments feel free to ask and thanks for watching